Hey everybody, welcome to the Golden State Media Concepts Music Podcast with Jordan and Keith, or Keith and Jordan, depending on who you ask. I'm Jordan. (laughs) I'm Keith. (laughs) <laughs> How's it going, guys? How's it going, Keith? I'm good, sir. How are you doing today, man? I'm doing good. You know, yeah, good. yesterday I had to think about it, but I think I've come to the conclusion <laughs> I'm going to be all right today. Yeah, you kill me with that. You're like, when people ask me how I'm doing, I, I don't know how to answer. I, like, I never do. I literally have to think about it every time. Oh, man. I, I always go with how I feel, man. I just tell them, you know, if it's crappy, if I'm, doing, I'm doing crappy. It is funny when I tell people I'm not doing too good and they look at me like, why did you tell me that? I'm like, well, why'd you ask? Yeah. Don't ask if you don't. I don't ask you how you're doing. But without meaning it, that's just the type of guy that I am. That's, but yeah, that's the just music and greetings podcast with Jordan and Keith. <laughs> how do you greet? How do you listen to your music? Exactly. Oh, well, it's CDs, digital music, all of it. So today's uh, music podcast, we're going to uh, go over the new Beyonce record called Lemonade and the new Weezer album, uh, which is the White Album. So we're excited to talk about both of those. So starting off with the Beyonce album, Jordan, what do you think? I loved it. I loved it way more than I thought I was going to like. I right? I liked it more than I thought I was going to like it, and you I too, loved man. it more than I thought it was possible to love this Beyonce. Album. I know, man. I know. It's yeah. I, I'm with you, man. When I saw the video for Formation, I had a good feeling about the the, the new album before it came out, and I was uh, I was it was just a pleasant surprise. I, I really enjoyed the record too. But go ahead. What, what were you saying about it? Well, I, I I really I think about the same thing. I, I could just reiterate the thing was. I was going in there ready to just kind of go, oh, you know, Beyonce album. I'm going to have a couple of good tracks here. It's going to suck. It's going to have two or three good tracks. You're not going to like it. You you dragged me in. I I was (laughs) there kicking and screaming, but I really enjoyed it. And I ended up listening to the whole album without realizing I listened to the whole album, which is a huge testament. She came with it. She came with it. I, if, mean, I don't go ahead. Yeah, no. If I if I had my you know if I would had it on repeat, I would have never realized for I think at least two and a half more times because it was just it was consistently catchy and a lot of it was just I felt like I I can't believe this is Beyonce making this. There's a lot of different varieties of just kind of stylings in the album, and all of it was just incredibly expressive and at the same time just being really fun to listen to. I think like so. This is the first Beyonce album I've bought since her first one. Her very first solo album. Um, and I think for me, and the reason why that was is because, like, I think she's a great singer, a great entertainer. It's just that a lot of times I felt like she would only have a good three or four songs. And maybe, I don't know, maybe the industry or, or management was like, or the record label was like, well, we just want you, we, we, need, we need to have three good singles and everything else is whatever <laughs> i mean maybe that conversation was had maybe it wasn't I, I i don't know what it was i mean but i always felt like okay she's she's great um give it give me the whole enchilada don't, just don't give me a small mini taco <laughs> you yeah. know when it comes to the record and she gave me the whole enchilada and a super burrito with this record um the only thing that puzzled me is why is the album called lemonade <laughs> it's because it, you know usually like when you name an album you usually have a song off that album that, with the name, but but not always. That's not always the industry standard rule. You can name an album something and never have a song with that title in it at all. As, so, but as with evidence with the uh, White album, right? I mean, well, yeah, but we can talk about that. Oh, well, yeah, I mean, I, I, yeah. I get what you're saying though, yeah. and I I don't really know where the uh, lemonade comes in from, but I enjoyed it yeah. just so much. I really did. Yeah. I, I was surprised several times when i was listening to a track i was genuinely surprised like oh you've done this too now and I, my list for like songs that i like just kind of kept adding up to the point where i just said okay just entirely i really like the so album. we should probably talk about the songs for I, I guess like, yeah like, okay I'd rather just talk it, about like the it. entire thing <laughs> <laughs> but it, so, was, it was such a pleasure yeah and i think from the beginning with um pray you catch me i was already i kind of knew that this was going to be something uh, you know this i'm already like i'm it's not what i'm expected Okay. And as it kind of went on consistently, like um, with the Jack White song, the Don't Hurt Yourself, I loved that. I think all of them in a different stylings, all were basically kind of having the same message, which is just fierce. It's just getting to it. Yeah. That track is a, a, a pleasant surprise. Uh, her working with Jack White. I mean, that was really cool. I, I didn't see that coming. I had no idea that that was going to happen. Um, it's It's got a nice rock, funky uh, feel to it. The drums have a nice white stripes meets hip hop uh, intro to it. 
Man, I like that. I mean, it's a, it's a good song, and it, so it seems like most of this album is themed about her her relationship with her husband Jay Z, or that's the impression that we're getting. I mean, that's what we've been reading about too. I mean, I don't know if that is completely true or not, but I mean, it's this album seems to be about yeah her her, her relationship, being in love, her marriage. And, and maybe Lemonade is talking about just making things sweet. I mean, I'm not sure. But don't hurt yourself. If you love me, don't hurt yourself. You know, I, I like that in the way the song ends. And, like, what we didn't mention is that this album came out um, with a DVD in it, too. So it's um, it's like a DVD. I mean, so there's, there's a, a video record. So before the physical CD came out, she released the video uh, album version of Lemonade on um, uh uh, title, 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 which is her husband's company, Jay Z's company. So that was a, it's exclusively available there first, and that was a cool move. I, I used to talk about in the past uh, with friends of mine that I wanted there to be a, a vision where an artist, because I love music videos. Music videos is, is what got me into different types of genres of music. That I wanted to see, I was going to call it a view chord. I, now, in retrospect, I think that name probably stinks, but you know, it was going to be a. The CD of all you know of all music, and then a DVD of videos for every song, and that way you could just pick what you wanted to be you know entertained by. So she did something like this. She made an album before similar where she had videos for songs. So I thought that this album was going to have a video for every song. It doesn't. It has videos for certain songs, but then she has when you look at the booklet and you look at those pictures, and they have like the one word sayings. She has th uh, themes. That go in between the the videos that she did uh, perform and, and videotape or, or film, and um, it, it's it gives the, the album like a really cool, independent, like dark kind of feel as well. In in my eyes, when I watch the videos, the ones that I did watch, so I I have to get back and watch some more of them. But yeah, I'm really enjoying it. But, I yeah. agree with you. I, I think like if I could just say the I think honestly, if I, I can. I think the album was kind of inspiring, really. Like, it, yeah, yes, it was definitely. something that I didn't expect from her, and I, I can keep saying that for you know the entire time of this podcast. I just because I was genuinely blown away from it, and I came out of it did I felt kind of inspired, and I felt like just kind of like yeah, I can do this, I can handle things. It it made me feel empowered. That's awesome. I, I think yeah, Miss Sasha Fierce made you feel, feel she made you feel fierce, and I'm not mad at her. It's, but Beyonce saying with Lemonade that I'm a veteran now. You know, I, I'm becoming my own music icon. If I wasn't before, I'm I'm definitely that now. I'm doing my thing, and uh, this is it. This is how I feel. This is what I'm writing, and it just it, it, it flows. It's it's a it's a great record. My favorite songs would be um, Hold Up, Don't Hurt Yourself, uh, Formation. Uh, and Daddy's Lessons. Uh, did you want to? Uh, Daddy's Lessons starts off with uh, Dixie Time, like Ragtime, Louisiana Jazz for the intro, and then it goes into like this country type of blues thing, and it's and it's really cool. It was a nice, pleasant surprise. What did you think? Definitely a surprise, and you know, it's not something that I would typically listen to, but I think when it came into this album, when it came next to the song before it, after it. I think it fit really well, and it made yeah. it just all around more enjoyable. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's an yes. album where you could pick some just certain songs off of it, but I could just sit down and listen to the entire thing, and I would really just enjoy it from beginning to end. Well, and she reminds people that she's a southern girl. She comes from Texas. Yeah. She's like, what is she? Yeah. You know, um, her mother's Creole blood and, and daddy from Alabama. That gives her, makes her Texas Bama. That's on Formation. So I think with Formation, the first single, she was warning you, hey, I love my soul music, but I like country too this is a, a, a tribute to my daddy you know who helped you know get me where i'm at today you know so I, yeah it was nice it was it, it was cool it's a nice it's a nice track so that track stands out because it's different uh, don't hurt yourself with jack white she's got so much uh james blake on here that's the guy who did the retrograde song the mm -hmm, mm -hmm, that guy <laughs> Keith, copyrights <laughs> That's all I can no, do. That was two on key. Hey, hey, you're right. Well, I don't, I don't um, know it was. Would you say this is your favorite Beyonce album? Definitely. Like I said, it's the first yeah. time I bought hers in over five, seven years. Goes dude. without saying. Yeah. yeah. So I'm, you know, 
I want to go to the tour. Formation comes. I got the money. I'm going to see her. I'm, you know, I'm, I, I'm, I'm part of the B Bayhive now. You know, she got, she got, she got me. She won me over, dude. I, I hope you invite <laughs> me. I, I like it so much more. And a uh, broken record here, pun intended. But I just really like. I came out of it using words I would never describe myself as. I'm fierce and I'm empowered now. And that's that's a killer combination. So your nickname is Sasha. You're, you're, you're Jordan Sasha. Sasha Maybe Jordan yeah. Fierce. Let's yeah. Learn. Yeah, it was I'm open fierce, to though. it. Yeah, <laughs> no, it, it's a great album, and uh, definitely recommend it. Uh, I, yeah, like I said, I like it so much. I, I, I definitely want to see her in, in in concert if I can. So I think we're we're both in agreement on Beyonce Lemonade. Yeah, no, I I <laughs> imagine that Keith, if you found anybody out of here that you didn't like it, he'd be willing to buy you breakfast or dinner or something i don't know i haven't oh, talked to him yet about right it. man you ain't right that's how sure he is about it and that's how sure i am that keith is sure about it so yeah, i know i'm Beyonce, bald but right i'm not daddy warbucks dude don't worry don't worry <laughs> but thank you for listening and uh, for- we'll be right back um after this break we're gonna have an amazing commercial you're gonna love listening to it almost as much as us so and we'll be and we'll be we'll be back with the weezer album so we'll be back soon All right, and we are back, and our next review is the new Weezer album. It's called the White Album, uh, and uh, it's what do you, what do you, so? What do I say? Yeah. What, what's your uh, so opinion when, when I first heard the album, I didn't like it, and then I listened to it again, and I, and I like it a lot. So, and, and that happens a lot, man. It's just like there's so much music coming out today that you can't just go off on one listen. Sometimes you have to put something back, put it down, and come back to it. You know, and, and and maybe maybe you have to be in a different space. I don't know, because I was driving when I first popped it in, and I was just like, um. But then I popped it in again, and it, and it just clicked. So Rivers Cuomo is the founding member and, and and main songwriter of Weezer, and what I like about Rivers Cuomo is that he's the founding member and main songwriter of Weezer. What I don't like about Rivers Cuomo is that he's the founding member and main songwriter of Weezer. <laughs> what, you want to explain that? I don't. So, um, when you when there's one person writing all the music in the group, uh, you'll, you'll peak after a while. And once you peak, a lot of times you can never recoup from that. You can never bounce back and, and keep on making great music. It's hard for one person to write all the music and make it all like great and make all these hits I mean, it, it's done but after a while i think every songwriter who's done that from pete townsend and noel gallagher have, they've had peaks and valleys um but this is a i mean this is an ambitious record i mean the only other white album we know of is from the beatles and that's a classic record that's over 30 years old and the production of that album is amazing i still can't figure that record out but weezer pulls it off with this record um it's it's good it's a great i don't know if it's an alternative pop record i don't know if it's emo i never did like that term but <laughs> but so you're saying that weezer is bigger than the beatles now no what i'm saying is that <laughs> see look at you trying man you gonna I it, didn't. I didn't say it. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. Uh, you're gonna get it <laughs> you, think, you think that it follows well though it's it's ambitious yeah, it's naming a, it, but it works. It's ambitious. It's bold. They they might be the only rock rock and roll group that have different colored records, colored theme records. Uh, my favorite Weezer album is by far is still the Blue album, the first album. But there's a Blue album, a Green album, a Red album, and now the White album. So yes, it's a White album, and it's similar to the Beatles, but they bla- they, they blaze their own trail because they have different theme colored records, literally. It's not just one. I don't think that's what blazes the trail for Weezer, and I, I'm a huge fan of them. Okay. I what I love about it are I don't think that there's been a misstep when it comes to the color records, and I think the white album still like nothing's changed with that. Okay. I loved the red album. I loved blue, green. I've got all the Weezer colors of the rainbow and white album. I, I didn't disappoint me whatsoever. Now I wouldn't say go back and say white album. It's better than blue. It's better than any color that's your favorite color. But it was still just really enjoyable to listen to. And one thing that I really loved about it, which um, I haven't seen as much with the Weezer albums that have come out before, the you know the, the more recent ones. Uh, this is the first new Weezer album that I instantly liked almost all of the songs. It was just something that I can just hear all over again. And it was something that I, I can just kind of put on repeat and just keep going through. Now, it's still that you know same kind of fun, poppy... Let's head down to the beach, you know, and um, let's talk about Weezer's colored albums, you know. It's, 
but it's nice. It's great. It's it it kind of maintains that lightheartedness. Well, while Beyonce, I listened to it and I felt fierce. I felt just a lot of emotions that were you know I can overcome anything. Weezer, I felt like there's nothing to overcome. Life is good right now. I'm I'm happy. I'm go lucky. That's awesome, dude. Okay. Yeah. I, just, I don't know what to say to that. <laughs> you, well, you can try. I think we're still recording. <laughs> that no, that's good. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I get that feeling too. It, it has a, a a nice sunny feel to the record. It, it really does. Um, I mean, songs like "Jacked Up" are cool. I, I, I like that song a lot. I like my favorite song is so "Thank God for Girls," of course, and. Um, do you want to get high? Is 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 good? It's just interesting though, because it's not what you think. It's it's about him, you know, and this girl, and just you know, having a new relationship with her and hanging out and doing different things. It is a Weezer album, so that was exactly what I was thinking whenever I saw "Do You Want to Get High." So that there was no surprise there. That's that they have a similar theme. I, I was going to ask though. Um, so your your favorite album is the Blue album, right? Oh, dude, my name is Jonas. Sweater song. Yeah, yeah, no argument uh-huh. there. It's a lot oh. of fantastic stuff. Buddy Holly. I mean, I never heard a rock dude, you know, bust out hip hop rhymes. What's with these homies dissing my girl? Why do they got a front? I mean, I don't know. If people caught that. I mean, that was him saying, "I like rap music, and I'm going to use that in my songwriting," and he did. <laughs> well, do you, how would you compare it to um, the uh, White album? How would you compare Blue to White? I think it's a good record, but I think the Blue album is a better album. But, you know, but that's my favorite album. Though, is so there, would you say that there's a huge difference in the style, or do you think that they maintained the same throughout the years? I think there's a difference in the style. Uh, whereas the White album, like like, like I said, it, it has a a nice summer a summary feel to it. This is a great summer rock and roll record. It is. Um, like you said, it's life is good. Uh, you can hear the exuberance and, and the excitement in, in River's voice when he's singing. Um, he's, he's hitting a stride. He is. You know, but when you compare any artist to their first record, it's almost not fair, man. Cause well, we just a- did it with Beyonce and it worked out pretty well. <laughs> Point taken, Joe. Yeah, Point yeah. taken. All right. All and right. I'm not expecting you to say which is better or worse, but well, you know, no, it's just there's that, been evolution, and I'd like yeah. to know how far you think they've come. I think he's excelled at making theme records that have a give you a certain feel. It wasn't that the Blue Album. I mean, I, the Blue Album has a certain feel, but it's the Blue Album to me is a very it's an emotional record. It's it's just. Um, it goes in different places. You know, My Name is Jonas is very different from Sweater, Come Undone. Yeah. You know, it's just, I mean, I think I think the Blue Album has more dynamics. So there's more variety. But the White Album might be more conceptual, if that makes any sense. I'm not sure if it makes sense. I, <laughs> me, I think my, my opinion, my, what I, my thoughts were on the White Album were, I think they came all from the same place, but it was a good place. Now, I agree with you. Blue Album it had a lot of difference. There's a lot of dynamics, this and that going on, and it, it made it a really fun album. But I think all of this came from the same well, or you know, the same few wells. Not bad to drink from, though. It was still, it was still good. It was still really entertaining. Okay. Well, and I guess what I noticed too is that I still can, I, I, I can still feel the missing of Matt Sharp's presence. Really, yeah. you, you think that it did make a huge difference with it? Oh yeah. Well, have you you've heard oh, the yeah. uh, last couple albums, right? With uh, I didn't hear the one before this. The what's the last one? I think I have might be Maladroit. Maladroit, yeah, that that was a few albums back, but it wasn't yeah. bad at all. It was great. I think um, there's definitely been an evolution, but the weird thing about Weezer is you can say that a lot's changed, but at the same time you can say absolutely nothing's changed. Oh, okay. It's still the band that you can listen to going in the same situations you did before. I feel like if I had um if if I'm in the mood to listen to like Troublemaker from the Red Album, I'd be in the mood to listening to California Kids, you know? Okay. I can see that. Which I mean it's it goes to say, I mean, with Beyonce, there there's an uh there's a song for feeling sad, there's a song for being happy. And mm-hmm. you could say the same for Weezer. I mean, there's Pinkerton, which was amazing. But uh, I think a larger part of, you know, Weezer's music, it's something that you can listen to when you're counting on just, you know, getting some uplifting feeling. 
which makes it really nice, which makes it fun. It makes it great to have it just in the you know your music library and your on your giant shelf of CDs. Okay, so are there any songs that stand out to you? Well, like I said, I think California Kids was great, and um, you know what? I really I, I agree with you. Thank God for Girls. That was a really fun song to listen <laughs> yeah, to. Yes. So we so we agree about both records we like them both i think so i was really hoping to disagree with you i was was (laughs) rolling my sleeves up for the fight but oh the day is still young my friend yeah no i I don't count (laughs) on it as soon as this recording goes off got a few choice words but uh i I think that it was great (laughs) i loved both of the albums yeah i think so too yeah we recommend i recommend them we both recommend them i Uh, was skeptical with weezer and i was getting ready to hate beyonce's or i was ready to just nitpick a couple good songs and i was skeptical with weezer but they 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 proved me wrong so we'll we'll, we'll finish up with the uh the compare contrast summary right after this one more amazing commercial yeah right so i will see you guys in a second Hey everybody, welcome back. Um, I hope we weren't going too long. I don't think we were. You know, came back pretty on time. This is Jordan. <laughs> this is Keith. Hey Keith. So um, we we reviewed Beyonce. We reviewed Weezer, The White Album, and Lemonade. Yes, definitely. Uh, both great albums. We definitely recommend that you pick them up. But you had some what you want to? Yeah, I was I was going to ask you a couple it. things. You mm-hmm. know. Um, I was really ready to hate something. I'm, I'm, I hate that I, I came in cocked and I, I ended up loving both of these albums. So <laughs> I just want to hate something. I can't though. But I, I was going to ask, you know, how does your um, how does this album change your opinion of the artist? I was going to ask for Beyonce's Lemonade. What, do you feel differently about Beyonce? Do you feel differently about yeah. uh, Legacy? Yes, I, yeah, yes, I do. I'm, I'm going to go back now and pick up some some of the records, like maybe B Day and some other albums, and check them out now. Because I, I want to see the transition and see how she grew from those records to this one. Actually, the album before this I was going to buy, um, but she had originally released it as a double, you know, a two CD set, one the music and one the DVD for the videos, and then they pulled it, or it was a limited edition, and then it was just the CD with the music on it. So I never bought it. So I'm still trying to find the album before this that has uh which is similar in the sense that it, it had the cd with the video companion to it for, so i still want to get that but yeah i'm gonna go back and check out some of her older records now because uh she's she's definitely grown lemonade versus her first album her first album a lot of great singing a lot of great uh it's a strong r&b soul record uh with a little reggae thrown in because you got sean paul on there with baby boy and that was my jam but uh this album is more of a a, a nice a hip hop soul record um you know in, in the sense that i think that there's definitely like a nod to people like mary j blige who they call the queen of hip hop soul there's a I, mean, I can hear like an influence with beyonce on this record cuz it has this this is a beyonce record that's great and it has attitude it, it's a a hip hop soul rebellious record and it's just good it's fun she's asserting her independence and she's putting her sleeve out on her you know uh her heart on her sleeve letting you know uh you know about her relationship and you know and where she wants it to go where it is and who she is i mean it's yeah yeah it's it's a it's a nice genuine record that i yeah that i like i could see that you you know what makes a movie really great for me keith what it's whenever I watch the movie, let's say that it's it's a Western movie, and I come out of the theater, and I want to be a cowboy. I feel like a tough cowboy guy, and that's just – yeah, yes. it, it really put me into it. Like if you're watching a sci-fi and you feel like, all right, now I want to go see the stars now. I'm ready to just blast off. Mm-hmm. I think that's what Beyonce's album did for me. After I listened to it, I felt – I felt just stronger, which is it's a weird feeling. I never thought I could, I would, li- I would die before I would say Beyonce made me feel very strong and independent. But That's I think cool, it, it was the message that it really did have. I, it cool. like I, I keep circling back to those words like empowering. But when I did come out of it, I felt very motivated. That's amazing. I mean, good music is universal and it's supposed to evoke certain emotions. And there's no rule book and what those emotions are as long as it evokes those emotions that's a good thing 
Yeah, and I, I see, so I, if, I know what if you mean. listening to Lemonade made you feel empowered and, and strong and independent, that's great. Now that speaks volumes about who she is as an artist and what she's doing. So right on, man. I mean, for me, it just made me feel good. Just a good record. I just it's just nice. It's so it's rare to listen to a, a new album today from beginning to end without skipping songs. Yeah, and I don't have to do that with this record. So Lemonade, you know, it, it does that. So. I, I agree. It concept. is a rare. It's a solid concept record. I dig it. So, so yeah, that w- it was a good feeling. Lemonade, A plus on my end. Yes, I, I think definitely should be pointed out that Keith is one of those people that collects CDs, physical copy. In case anyone was wondering, yes, it. I'm old school like that, and I'm proud of it. So. If you're wondering why that CD store is still in your town, it's from people like Keith. So yes, mystery yes, solved. Definitely. So yeah. So. Yeah, so she's made me want to go back and listen to her older catalog now. And I feel the same way about the new Weezer record, too, the White Album. Uh, after listening to this record, because I was prepared for this album not to be any good. I was prepared to have maybe one or two songs on it that I liked. Because I've had that experience with them. Um, that's how it's been for me with Weezer. Now, you asked me earlier what was the last Weezer album that I had, and I forgot. It was Ratitude. It was Ratitude. And I bought that album because of the crazy cover with the dog and the fact that it had a little Wayne on the record. I was just curious. So, You're but really now, selling it. <laughs> yeah, but now, you know, I'm going to have to go back and listen to that album again. But yeah, the White Album is a good album. Like I said, it was very ambitious because, you know, the only other White Album was the Holy Grail, the Beatles White Album. But like I said earlier in our podcast, and you and I discussed it before the show, you know, they're like the only rock and roll band that have these color themed records it's not because the prince did a black album jay-z did a black album beatles did a white album weezer gave you what blue which said red yeah green, blue red green and now white they're slowly filling out the color box so yeah. so they're they're paving their own their own way just by doing that let alone the sound of what they're doing with their music like i told you i never liked that term emo because i felt like music is already emotional but go ahead uh, yeah 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 i can talk all day about that what, what were you about to say uh I, what i was going to say is <laughs> i really <laughs> yeah i can rant about that yeah so no I, yeah. I have to stop myself so go ahead <laughs> <laughs> save it for the blog um I, I was gonna say that for the Weezer album, what I really liked, it, it kind of felt faith restored because I was a bit shaky on the last ones. I mean, there was some solid tracks on each one, but as we went on, the one thing that I always felt about Weezer were the colored albums. Those were the great. I, I loved Red. I loved Green. I loved Blue, and they, I'm very passionate about them. They're what made me really love Weezer. And when I saw that they released another colored album. I was kind of worried that that would kind of mess up this cool legacy that they've just kind of made with these now that it's actually come out and it's been something enjoyable. I'm I'm relieved. My faith's been restored in Weezer. I feel I feel better about them. I want to go back and listen to everything all over again, the good, the bad and just kind of see what my you know what perspective's changed. I I'm all around just a bigger Weezer fan because of it. It's made me stronger as a person. Right on. Stronger as a person. Yeah. Oh, okay. All right. Okay. I didn't know you were going to say that, but all right. Uh, yeah, I'm going to definitely go back and listen to Ratitude. And I'm going to, I think I still have the Green album. I didn't buy the Red album, but I'm going to go back and, and pick up their other records now and compare them in contrast because you've spoken so glowingly about the color theme records. Now I'm going to do that. I, I've got Pinkerton at home. I'm going to go, back. Know, yeah, go, go back, back to that. When you say that, that that's considered like the quintessential emo album from them or something. Yeah, go back, go back and listen to it, and I, I think you're going to enjoy it. What what are you doing Monday anyway? Just give it a chance. I think this is really going <laughs> to blow you away. I know your schedule. Well, I'm so. not I'm not going to lie to you too. I mean, when I saw the Weezer White album, one of the reasons why I got it because it, it was insanely cheap when I saw it for a new record. So I'm like, okay, I'm going to buy this and check it out. So yeah, uh, but 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 I'm glad I did. It was worth it. Hit. Yeah, it, it was. So and you know, it's a good testament when you. Like these two CDs that we reviewed today, we, we like them both. You know, we recommend them strongly. And now we're willing to go backtrack and listen to the earlier stuff from a, from these musicians. That is a great thing because that doesn't usually happen a lot with people. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know? no, I, it's I, it's crazy that we got that, you know, two albums in one episode that really kind of brought out that feeling. It's surprising that we even got one at that point because, I mean, with Beyonce – like I said, I'm just going to listen to it, and you know, I'm going to love that song. Oh, that one's nice. 
I, I'm, I'm a Beyonce fan. Oh. Yeah, me too. Like I said, if I can get to the Formation Tour and they got tickets that aren't too expensive, I'm going. What do we you know? call ourselves now, us Beyonce fans? <laughs> That's the, what, the Bayhive or something? The Beehive? Something like that, I think. I have to, I have Maniacs? To, I, don't, I don't know. I have to research that. Well, well, yeah, we'll come back to you guys next episode <laughs> and tell you what we identify ourselves as. But it's definitely positive. Yeah, Give these, Beyonce a try. Give yeah, these are both, a try. Yeah, both great records, so we definitely recommend them. And uh, So thanks again for listening to us. You've been listening to our Golden State Media Concept music podcast with Keith and Jordan. Jordan and Keith. Yeah, we appreciate everyone listening. You can catch us on Facebook, and you can catch us also on gsmcpodcast.com and on iTunes. So just check us out. We're, we're not going anywhere. We're going to be around. We have... Plenty of more uh, podcasts of music to talk about. So thanks again, and we'll see you somewhere out in space. Yep. Have a great day, guys. Bye.